the maritime industry. Fast, efficient and competitive. But even in the 21st century, there is a dark side where seafarers are abandoned, stranded and forgotten in foreign ports far from home. Around the world, there are few ports that have not played host at some time or another to one or more abandoned ships and their crews. Abandoned ships can be a serious hazard, and every situation of a seafarer being abandoned is a story of physical and mental misery. There's a number of reasons why ship owners could abandon their crews. The company could be going into bankruptcy. It could be a deliberate act for the benefit of the ship owner himself. It could be because the ship has been arrested by port state control, perhaps by, by creditors, as the company is becoming insolvent. A ship is a self-sustaining living environment. When ships are abandoned, sometimes in very difficult countries to survive, a seafarer's life becomes very difficult if there's no fuel to run the ship, so you can't manoeuvre against weather, you can't provide heating, you can't provide air conditioning. Then food, any seafarers become very dependent on the local environment. We do know of lots of examples where seafarers end up fishing off the side of the vessel just to get some basic substance. When you're abandoned, I think one of the most difficult things is the fact that they're in a port that's not within their country. They have no means, they can't get home. It becomes a very dramatic situation for a seafarer. The real extent of the problem of abandonment over the years has never been accurately measured. The ILO keeps a database of cases of abandonment, but there is probably an under-reporting of abandoned ships and crews. In 2009 alone, at the height of the global economic downturn, a total of 64 vessels were abandoned, affecting 737 seafarers. Abandonment is not good for our industry, gives a very negative impression. Now, many ship owners have a good connection with their seafarers. They don't want the small minority to destroy what is a crucial part of the global economy. The ITF is part of the very proud maritime industry. We take our role very seriously and we've been campaigning tirelessly with the ILO to tackle the blight of abandonment. And it's absolutely vital that we've engaged with the ship owners and all of the other social partners. When a crew is abandoned in a foreign port, there is often a familiar pattern of events that starts to unfold. The ship owner stops paying the crew's wages and unpaid wages escalate. There's no money for food, fresh water or medical care. The fuel runs out. Living conditions aboard the ship quickly become intolerable without proper heating or cooling. Shore leave may be denied. Often, the ship owner cannot be traced. On other occasions, the ship owner remains in the background, sometimes threatening the crew, more often making false promises that they can't keep. On board, boredom and frustration sets in. The mood sinks and tempers flare. And the impact of abandonment stretches far beyond the ship itself. When seafarers have not been paid for months and can't get back home, their families suffer too and are left begging for handouts in order to survive. The international stakeholders have responded to the problem of abandonment and, in 2001, an expert working group of the International Maritime Organization and International Labour Organization jointly issued guidelines on the provision of financial security in the case of abandonment of seafarers. However, the guidelines were an interim measure only and the expert working group continued to meet to find a sustainable, longer-term solution. In August 2013, the Maritime Labour Convention entered into force. It dealt with repatriation, which is a critical element that might prevent abandonment taking place. 
The Maritime Labour Convention 2006 is a directory of the entitlements and the rights of seafarers in a number of areas. Employment terms, accommodation, catering, welfare, social security. Within that, there is a section on repatriation. There was a view by some in the MLC negotiations that felt the repatriation arrangements in the MLC covered abandonment and were quite satisfactory on their own. Uh, in actual fact they weren't because the repatriation requirements in the MLC is related to a number of specific circumstances and the conditions for that repatriation uh, were not specified. In April 2014, a meeting of the Special Tripartite Committee concluded an amendment to the MLC to deal with abandonment. Dave Heindel, Chair of the ITF Seafarers Section, was the spokesperson for the ITF at the Special Tripartite Committee meeting in Geneva that adopted the amendment. The Special Tripartite Committee was there to pick up where the MLC stopped. When the MLC was entered into force in 2013, it dealt with repatriation, but it did not deal with abandonment. The amendments were intended to make sure that the seafarers were protected. The idea was if a seafarer was abandoned, he would have the insurance to be able to be repatriated. The MLC overlooked a number of consequences that are severely impacting on seafarers who find themselves in a situation of abandonment. So this is why amendments were tabled in 2014 and adopted in order to properly and comprehensively regulate protection of seafarers against abandonment. The first component of the amendments relate to a clear definition of what abandonment situations are and what situations we are regulating. The second uh, important element of the amendments is about the establishment of a financial security system. Seafarers who find themselves in a situation of abandonment would have direct access to a fund that would speedily pay them uh, what the ship owner owes them not only in terms of the repatriation cost, but also covering a number of other related costs to abandonment, in particular wage arrears that the ship owner might have to pay still to the seafarers, but also all the other related costs a seafarer might incur in a situation of abandonment. The amendments related to the abandonment will come into force in January 2017 and it will come into force for all member states which would have not expressed formally disagreement. Seafarers need to be aware that there is a possibility of abandonment. Seafarers should always try to do a background check on the company that they're going to be working for. They should speak to other seafarers, speak to the manning agent, and make sure that they have as much information as possible they can talk to the ITF, they can talk to the unions, and I think that one of some of the early warning signs of that something's not right, something's going on, is if there is a delay in payment. If a crew is facing abandonment, there are a number of organisations who may be able to offer assistance. Seafarers can contact the ITF, an ITF inspector, or a local trade union. They can contact the flag state, the port state, the seafarers embassy or consulate in port, any welfare organisations in port or the local community. If the vessel is covered by the MLC, they should access the financial security system under the MLC for repatriation or abandonment. There should be a copy of the financial security certificate on board the ship. It may be necessary to contact a local lawyer. Seafarers' rights are complex and a local lawyer can advise on seafarers' rights or if the crew are at risk of detention or deportation. We always have to hope that people are not going to run away from their responsibilities. But if that happens, then at least we need to have a system where you're going to have someone who's going to take that responsibility. And the MLC is going to provide that. It's going to provide a mechanism so that if they are abandoned by their employer, by the ship owner, 
then there's others who will step in and take the responsibility, be it Port State or be it Flag State. The IDO wants to achieve effective protection of every single seafarer in the world who finds himself or herself in a situation of abandonment. The amendments that were done in 2014 could be a turning point. We hope that the industry will respond appropriately in dealing with the amendments that were adopted in 2014 that should give the seafarers the, the security that they need to assure that they were repatriated. The industry has to globally implement it and the indication is there's an agreement between us, ship owners and the other parts of the industry that it's not good enough that seafarers are left in this kind of situation. This solution must be delivered by all parties on a global level in the interests of our very proud industry. For more information about Seafarers Legal Rights, visit www.seafarersrights.org.